Excellent. Uh, okay, so yeah, welcome to the virtual agile. So um, it is really great to have you guys with us today. So thank you so much for joining. I know everybody's time is very uh, precious. Um, and so it's really great to be able to have you here to talk about framing conversations to increase connections, an exciting topic for tonight. Um, just a few uh yeah just a few more things so uh, like i say just you know thank you as always we always appreciate that you've brought your yourselves to these sessions and it's just so great to be able to share knowledge um between each other and learn from each other and learn from um our wonderful guests as well so um yes thank you for continuing to be new but also to continue to have uh, returning faces as well uh, just a bit of an intro, so I'm Helen, Gar I'm Helen Garcia, so my name is Helen Garcia and I am an Agile coach, a Scrum Master, and I'm more recently Cognitive Behavioural Coaching, so uh, that's who I am and I have my wonderful co-host here, who's Ines Garcia, <laughs> very nice, thank you, uh, also an Agile coach but an inventor of uh, lots of things and um, I don't know if you want to say a few words, are you happy with my... Yeah, sure. I'd take an inventor. Uh, I think we all should uh, call ourselves inventors because we do invent things for a living, right, in a sense. And so I think it's important that we bear in mind the creative sense of the, the things that we do. And today I'm also your co-host. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, Ines. Um, So just to take you through a bit of um, the day today. So um, firstly, just uh, we are, as, as I said, we are recording the session in terms of like a collaborative way of the session going is that you're very welcome to ask questions in the chat. You're very welcome to come off mute um, to ask questions or do, talk about a topic um, that, that has come up, whatever it might be. So please uh, feel free to do that. Um, very open and transparent in this in this group, like I say. Um, the time box for this is 90 minutes. Uh, so that takes us to an, uh, uh, well, that's an hour and a half. Um, so an hour and 20 minutes left we have. Um, so without further ado, let me just continue. Um, as you guys know, uh, if you're returning, I am a big, big, big fan of rock, paper, scissors. I play this um, at least every week with my teams as a scrum master. It's a great way to be able to make decisions, I find. So or just get different people's views on things or how they react, because not everybody likes to be verbal in conversation. Some people like to um, use, you know, we all like to use our body language, but obviously um, it does help to bring out new and different um, ideas and just understanding different points of view. So I would like to practice this with you guys. Are you all familiar with the game Rock, Paper, Scissors? Yep. Yes, excellent. It's great because it's global. Um, for many other reasons as well. So I want us just to do a bit of a practice, a bit of a finger warm up. So if you would be so kind, if you're not on camera and you'd like to come on camera, that'd be lovely. Um, but if not, show us your best rock. Oh yeah, beautiful. Really, really lovely rocks out there. Cool. So we're gonna jump, we're gonna go a little bit crazy. We're gonna go to scissors now. Can I see your favorite pair of scissors? Depending on your day. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and lastly, we have got a piece of paper. Can you show me your piece of paper? Oh, are you fluttering in the wind? A queen's piece of paper there as well, lovely. Very nice, very nice. And I trust everybody else who's not on camera, they are also got a good rock, paper, scissors. So in order to test our abilities of this game, I'm just going to ask you some very, very, very simple questions. And all you need to do is show me a rock if it's a yes, show me a paper if it is a maybe, or show me a pair of scissors if it is a no. So the first question is, when we talk about deliberate communication, I get what that means. Do you get what the question means? <laughs> okay, got some maybes out there and got some strong yeses in there. Uh, I understand how I said, sorry, I'll reread that. I understand that how I say something, 
could bring a varied response. Could say, okay, excellent. And lastly then, uh, the third question is, I feel confident to frame conversations with different levels, uh, within different levels of the organization. Okay, we've got some maybes, a little bit of confidence, not loads of confidence, but some yeses as well. <laughs> well, it, you know what? Then this session is perfect. It is great because we have an expert with us today or somebody who is super passionate, at least, about this topic itself. So without, um, uh, uh, so, so now that we can, sorry, continue. <laughs> I'm having a bit of a rough day today. Apologies for that. Um, we will start to continue and I will uh, hand over to um, Innes just to uh, give us a quick introduction. Oh, thanks for that. Um, all right. So. I am static to finally have Pilar with us today. So thank you ever so much. We met through uh, Dr. Richard McKinnon. As you may remember, some of you, we had him over on a session on resilience just a year ago. So today is uh, the dynamic duo <laughs> completion um, because today, together with Pilar, they host um, Work Psych podcast. Uh, which I recommended. I'll post a link in the chat in a minute if you haven't just tuned in because it's really worth put for, for, from my perspective. Um, and then Pilar is an expert on remote teams and a director of, I love your company name, Virtual Not Distant. Um, mm -hmm. What a great mantra, right? So thank you for joining our tribe today and help us explore the difference that framing a conversation can have on our everyday life that's beyond work. Um, so very high value and relevant topic, no pressure. So please, Pilar, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and well, take it away. Thank you. And thank you everyone for welcoming me here because I, I, I wanted to have uh, made one of the previous ones and I didn't. And I was thinking today, oh no, I'm coming like into a community completely fresh but uh, Richard told me that it was a very nice group uh, and I've had great fun um, already within this. So I think it's interesting as well just to know that um, so the the topic for today is actually is, is not something I usually talk about in this way so specific um, when I was speaking to Ines saying well what what shall I come and run a session on what shall I what shall we cover and she found something in uh, one of our blog posts so on virtualnotdistant.com, we have loads of blogs. We also have a podcast called 21st Century Work Life, which is all about online collaboration. And I've been interested in this space since I looked it up. My first podcast uh, episode was, I think, in October 2014. So uh, I've been looking at what it means to work online, uh, different ways of working, um, leading remote teams. Leadership is my, my main interest. So I've been looking at that for a while, pre-pandemic, during pandemic, and now kind of post-pandemic. <laughs> so we shall see. We shall see what happens. And the topic of today is actually, it comes from something, again, that, that Ines found, and she thought, oh, maybe you want to hook the, the session on this. So I will explain the context of it, of course, because uh, it, it needs the context of how I've come to it. And I would love to, as we go along, again, as uh, Helen was saying, just any thoughts, conversations, if you want to raise your hand with the reactions in uh, Zoom, great. If you just want to at some moment say, hey, Pilar, can I interrupt? If it's not a good time, I will tell you. It's a small group. There's no reason why we can't be having a conversation. And um, so I think, I think that's it. I've got some notes here and I have some PowerPoint to guide me as well, because if not, I, I get excited by what's going on. Uh, yes, so, um, so to start with, um, let me just share my uh, screen. In fact, let me just play the slides. Uh, in fact, let me be before that. Is there anything that anyone needs to ask about the session before we before we go? <laughs> just because uh, some people have come in at some point. Uh, doesn't look like it. Okay, I'll just uh, hop in if you need to. Okay, let me just do that. Okay, screen and let's do that. So the role that I usually take I've, I've come up with this very silly name called facility trainer and it really is um, what I enjoy about working with people is 
embracing both roles. So I usually do the facilitator, which is I throw a question out and I have no idea of what's going to come out. Of course, I have some idea because I work with people and I have opinions, but it really is these open questions that we throw into the group, knowing that anything can come back. And then there's the trainer, which is I have a good idea of what I'm bringing through and I might ask a sort of leading question, but again, I have a good idea, not an idea of all of them. So that's the role that I would like to take today as well. Um, and I love this concept and it'd be interesting to see uh, when, when we pause for a second, if you have come across the concept of working out loud, because I love this concept in a broad sense, as in I threw this out to Twitter with some different headings, and Martin Gilbraith, who is a facilitator, amended what I'd written and he came up with these two. So I really like that idea of throwing stuff that is not, that's just a thought, throwing it out into the ether and seeing what comes back in a general way. Then in teamwork, we can also do that, of course. So what I thought we'd do today, we ha we'll have another check-in. I love the, thank you, Helen, for the... For the, um, for the starting activity, because I will steal something like that, <laughs> just to sense, just to sense where the groove is. That's excellent. Um, so we'll have another check-in, which is related, of course, to the theme. I'm then going to talk through the concept of visible teamwork, which is something I've been putting together over the last four or five years. Then we'll see what else comes up and then we'll wrap up. So here's the first uh, question I'm going to ask you. I hope you can all see these drawings <laughs> these scribbles and i'm going to ask you don't do anything yet don't say anything yet um, i want you to think of either how you're feeling right now or how you've been feeling over the last week could be about work for example with which one of these drawings do you identify most so that's a, a question just don't don't tell us anything yet with which of these drawings do you identify most This is not a simple task as at first I thought it might be. Ah, excellent. <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, 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 hang on to that thought. <laughs> hang on to that thought, please. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you to do now, oh, I've got a pen that doesn't work, is think, remember the number or numbers that, uh, um, remember the number. And what I'm going to ask you to do is go to the chat, but... Ah, <laughs> don't do anything yet. <laughs> okay, no, that's, fine. That's, fine. that's fine. That's absolutely fine. It's interesting. Um, go If you haven't done so yet, go to the chat, but don't press enter yet. Just put your number in the chat and we'll all press enter together. So, but not yet. So just stick your number in the chat. And after I say go, we will press enter if we haven't done so already. So one, two, three, go. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Excellent. Good. So if I can just direct your attention to the chat, I'm going to leave the, um, the drawings up just so that you can see them. Uh, but you know that with Zoom, you can, I think you can shift how you see the, the shared screen. So if you don't want to see them, you can just look at people's faces. So we've got, we've got some. So let's have a look. We've got one, two, three. We've got quite a range, quite a range. So... Um, I'm going to ask maybe if a few people can just share why they've picked the animal. But before that, uh, Ohad, why was it not as simple a task as you thought it would be? Because not one picture kind of represents necessarily everything that I had been through this week. Ah, nice. <laughs> and you were expecting it to be maybe one? And then when you started... I was expecting to say like, okay, you know, this week was... But wait a second, there were different parts <laughs> to this week. It's been a long week. Nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and do you, while, while we've got you on the mic, do you want to share? Uh, I mean, you don't have to, eh, for everyone. Yeah, I, I, if, if you know me, you know that I don't, I don't mind talking. Um, but um, yeah, I selected number three, uh, which is an ant, and just kind of thinking about the ant always, you know, busy working. And this week was definitely a, kind of a lot of building and, and a lot of just making sure to get things done. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Ahad. Someone else just want to share either? You can put your hand up if you want or open up your mic, actually. Anyone else want to share why they set the number they set? I picked number six. Uh-huh. 
because I thought the little elephant looked rather jolly, rather <laughs> happy with his tail up in the air. Nice. So, so I've resigned and I've moved. I'm moving on to an agile role, which I'm not in. At the I'm not in an agile role. Nice. Um, so I'm rather demob happy. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Ellen. Thank you. Uh, someone else. Someone else. I picked number one or two because I had a really slow week or actually a few years. It feels as if I'm just not making the progress that I want to make and everything just takes longer than what I ex expected to. But then I'm having so much fun doing what I'm doing. And it's like I feel like the butterfly enjoying the sunshine or the, the sunflower. Nice. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Excellent. Good. So. Um, why why bother with this kind of exercise um why, why bother with this kind of exercise what does this exercise give us for example rather than a round robbing of how are you today for example let's compare those two let's be specific what's the difference between an exercise like that and a how are you today round robin kate is saying more personal so what might so what might be what, why bother why bother you know putting those uh, diagrams together and saying okay let's um, let's go through identifying ourselves with these drawings rather than a round robbing of how are you today what might be the the benefits or or, or, or why or or, do, or are there any benefits. Somebody wants to speak without the camera that has no camera on. <laughs> we should be everyone except Maria. <laughs> what might be? Well, what is some? It's, yeah, Kate. It's great because it makes you think of yourself rather than focusing externally because we tend to focus externally a lot. And now it's like, hey, but how was my week? So it focuses you, it grounds you a little bit more. Okay, thank you, thank you. It focuses you, grounds you. Anything else? What else? Uh, Aaron, did you turn your camera on because you wanted to speak? Oh, you're muted. Uh, uh, no, just for like proper security, like we're normal. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. So you're you're there and you and we're, we're yeah, you're visible. I'm, I'm, maybe Mary Ellen. rather than people having to articulate verbally, it's easier to just pick. Yes. An yes. emotion through a picture. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yes. Lots of stuff there. Lots of stuff. It can help us. Um, it can give us a kind of vocabulary to talk about it as well. Uh, and then we're referring to the animal instead of, and it's, we're almost expressing ourselves through the animal, through the drawing as well, which sometimes is easier. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's more difficult. Sometimes it's very uh, difficult to relate to something like that, like a metaphor. Um, and also, I think we start, you can, it allows you to speak, to share whatever you want to share as well. So we heard already from you some personal stories, some personal stuff that's going on, some change that's going on or what's happening at work. Um, so we can pick the, the question is really open because it's just there for you to pick an animal and say, well, why did you choose it? And then you can bring anything to it. So for me, it's, uh, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little, also a little bit playful as well, because we're talking about animals and why we're an animal. And uh, sometimes there's some discussion as to what the drawing is as well. That's deliberate why some of them are a bit strange. Um, so I think that that, again, this is one way of framing a conversation. This is one of the ways. And it's, I think when we're coming, um, when we're, for example, getting together online, as we are doing now and getting together in a meeting, it gives us immediate, it's like, okay, we're in this world now. The world for all of us is these animals right now. And it, as you were saying, it makes you focus. You have to think a little bit, leave whatever else is, or you can bring whatever else is going on into the drawing as well. Again, so we can, we, we can choose what to do that. Do any of you use anything similar to check in with team members? Or have you seen or heard of other teams that use something similar? Um, maybe other kind of metaphors or? I've seen the one with, I think there's nine different sheep. 
nice sheep yes and, and you know one's got its heads down and you know the other one's jumping and yeah, that sort yeah. of thing but nice and how do you use it mary ellen i haven't used it have you, I've you've seen just seen it. the Mm. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so very. Um, so that gives us even more of a narrow frame because then we're all the sheep. <laughs> it's quite a nice unity thing as well. And then we we pick the the emotion. Um, Aaron. Yeah. So <clears throat> I use. So uh, I mean, I embed uh, liberating structures at work. Um, you know, without necessarily waving a flag saying liberating structures. So it's yeah, just yeah. sort of like as simple check-in tools, or sometimes a set of strings and then we've sort of built a bunch of all you know we're all half baked liberating structures people kind of maybe you know just enough skills that we can build a string or two strings and we just sort of just flop it all over the place wherever appropriate or, or just to sort of disrupt a flow you know mm. typically if if there's a lot of um i mean i think most people are familiar with a lot of corporate operating work where you just get into these very rigid patterns of execution that are, you know, pretty, you know, let's just say very average to low, to low grade in terms of their quality. And so bringing mm -hmm. the LS in tends to sort of disrupt things in a very safe way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so. thank you. So when we're talking about liberating structures, we're talking about different kinds of uh, a structure to a meeting, different dynamics as well. So for those who might not be familiar with that. And um, and something else you make me think as well is that uh, you said shaking things up as well. It could be, again, that we are used to coming into a conversation or a meeting. I'm talking real time at the moment. Um, we're coming into that meeting with... Um, with already like a pattern and a dynamic and we might introduce something that's completely different like okay well let's check in in a completely different way just to disrupt that a little bit just to to shake us up a little bit excellent so we've got the link to the liberating structures um in in the chat and kate says that uh she doesn't use uh, uh, kate can i ask you when you're saying that you 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 don't use these kind of check-ins because you're pretty aligned. Do you know what it is that helps you to stay aligned? I'm imagining, are you yes. a virtual or? Virtual, I mm -hmm. think actually. So we actually don't have a lot of real-time meetings. We mm -hmm. do everything. And I think that's part of it. So we don't expect the other person to respond immediately. And we have regular conversations all the time. I think that's the key. Mm -hmm. And you do this asynchronously, you're saying? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So not in real time. Excellent. Thank you. So that that helps then. Um, yeah, that helps us to stay to know what is going on uh, with, with each other. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, the other thing that I just want to mention is, and I'll, and I'll move on, is um, the, do you use chat storms? at all like uh, i called chat storm what we did where we just all put our number in the chat at the same time and then press enter Have you do you use that at all anyone has seen it used uses it yes no i haven't no i haven't used it every time i try and do something like that people preempt me and put it in the chat already <laughs> just as kate and i had demonstrated <laughs> great so uh, sometimes you've tried uh, aaron is your hand up for speaking or because oh, it stayed no, up no. Okay, uh, yeah, Munwai, right. um, when do you use the chatterfall, as um, as you call it? Oh, usually it's in Zoom, uh, in virtual meetings, and if I uh, want to ask some questions, but don't want people to, um, I want to to give people some time to think instead of being influenced by others' ideas, then I'll have people think and then type in the answers without pressing the enter. Uh, and then, uh, well, as the uh, when I tell them to, then they can uh, they can all press it, and and then they can, and I will usually give them a few minutes, well, actually a few seconds, thirty seconds or so, to read others' uh, ideas. So mm -hmm. that's usually that's what I use it. Thank you. So yes, we use it not to be influenced. Uh, it's also quite a nice way of uh, just seeing what's coming up. Um, it, it, it can give it a little bit of energy. I think it gives the chat a little bit of energy rather than that coming up. And also it's really nice as a way of capturing as well. Um, but the main thing for me is the, 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 the lack of group thing because you, you don't get really influenced by others. Excellent. So let me uh, let me crack on. So that is one way. I mean, we're already seeing um, that 
in the online space. And I'm going to talk both about the real time, so the synchronous, like the meeting, and the asynchronous that Kate was um, talking about. In you probably know that in the online space, unless you create the space for something to happen, it rarely happens, as in especially conversations. If we don't create the space for a conversation to happen because there is not that um, those uh, spontaneous encounters, just because of the way we interact and the way we structure our work when we're apart from each other, unless we structure something, it, it it really happens. And um, the, the, yeah, and it is the biggest challenge. It's the biggest challenge. It also makes it really interesting. <laughs> um, so this is what, this is the kind of thing that I've been uh, looking at um, over the last, the next, the last few years. And I'm going to share my screen now. And again, I was talking about this concept of working out loud because we've heard uh, be deliberate with your communication. Um, Helen was mentioning that earlier. We've heard over communicate. I'm not sure about that word for me doesn't resonate as much because it sounds like we are doing too much. Um, but also this concept of working out loud is something that I really embraced when I started to look at what remote teams were doing and, and working online. Because there is this idea, of course, that unless we do something deliberately, unless we are loud about it, uh, no one else will know what's going on. No one else will overhear conversations. No one else will know what's on our minds. What I see with what I saw with this concept of working out loud is that it just seems like, what do we share? What is the working out loud? What kind of work do I share? Uh, do I share everything? And so it's um, it helps to break it down and to say, well, what is it that we're talking about when we're saying that we have to be deliberate in our communication, that we have to over communicate? Because what can happen is that we generate so much noise. So it's sometimes it can be the equivalent of going into a meeting and everyone is talking at the same time about different things everywhere. So this concept of structuring conversations so that we can connect around different themes around different aspects of our work is something that that is that is interesting again it's what 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 interests me about uh online collaboration and online teamwork is that we really have to break down how we connect for example, some people connect over personal conversations about their life. Other people connect about conversations about the work, the work they're doing. Um, and then the work we're doing has 10,000 different layers as well. It's got the learning element in it. It's got the delivery element in it. It's got the, um, the collaboration element in it. So again, it's how what are the different aspects of teamwork that we can design to be um, aligned around. So I think that when we're looking at this concept of working out loud, we're really thinking of, okay, what's important? What, what, is, what is key? Because we can't be communicating all the time asynchronously, so we've got to choose. And this was part of the definition of working out loud, which is what helps others. What can I say to my team that helps the rest of the team? And what helps us to connect? Are there any other questions that we should be including here? And I've got one that's come to mind. So when we're thinking about um, sharing uh, what we are doing with our team, specifically asynchronously throughout the day in a chat platform, in an email, what are some of the things, what are some of the questions that we can ask ourselves when we're thinking, well, do I need to share this? Should I share it? How much should I share? What are some of the questions that we might be asking ourselves? I think sometimes you actually want to like show off something that you did. So you might want to make yourself feel a little bit better yes. by sharing something that you're proud of. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like that. What am I proud of? Yeah. And, and there was um, some time ago, there was, the, what was, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to ask. And I, Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, I wrote a blog post many years ago about some research that was done about the fact that um, remote workers felt like they couldn't blow their own trumpet. I mean, not necessarily that that's what you're saying or had, but uh, it might be. Um, but it was very difficult to really talk about something they were proud of uh, with their managers because the moment was never there. 
And the manager didn't ask <laughs> as well, because the, the because just again, the same because they didn't want to seem intrusive because maybe it wasn't there right. again. So I, I really like that, that we that we define that actually there are things that we are proud of and that we would like to share them with our team. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, yes. What about things that, you know, um, shouting out recognition of other people? So yeah. who should I recognize or who should I? What should we celebrate? Yes. Yes. What, we, what should we celebrate? Who's, who's, who do I want to highlight? <laughs> who's helped me? Uh, I'm saying, I mean, here's what helps others. Well, who's helped me? Yes. Anything else? Anything else have we got? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's so uh, when you're blocked or need help. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, we already see that. I mean, we know instinctively, sometimes we have to stop and, and, and ask ourselves. And sometimes we actually, we, we know, we know. So um, Ines, there's just too many places to log in and not enough to log out. Yes, yes, yes. That's a, but that's another thing then that if we, um, if we start to think about how we connect as people, we can start to make some of those decisions. So um, the, the issue with remote work is that conversations can creep up at any moment. Uh, and it's great that we have asynchronous because we can come to them when we are ready. But sometimes, especially if we're working in a large team or if we're part of different projects, we might feel like we've got all this information that we need. And actually, we need to be very... Um, it's not even deliberate. Sorry. It's very strict with ourselves to see what we engage with. And I don't know about you, Ines, but for someone like me that wants to know about everything, I want to know about everything just because I'm so curious. And sometimes I have to go, you know what, that, that's not, you know, I can, it's there, but they don't need me there. And that's another thing I think as well, when we're in a, in a position where we are leading a process or leading a team, it, that question of do they need me there becomes even more important when we're engaging because suddenly we've got everything open to us. What do you think, Ines? Yeah, absolutely. I think some, some magical things happen sometimes when you allow the space for, for the rest to step up or to, to do their own thing. You'll be surprised how, yeah. how good some things are. Yeah, yeah. And the, the danger with the online space is that because it's all there <laughs> for us to connect with, uh, it, it's, yeah, it, uh, it takes discipline. It takes a lot more discipline in that way. So, yeah, on the one hand, we can become really distant. And on the other hand, we can become super involved and it's not useful for anyone. So just again, just to be, I'm, I'm sharing at the moment the, the, the journey of what I'm seeing and how I'm connecting with this space, which is uh, I decided to not talk anymore about working out loud and start talking about visible teamwork, which I mentioned earlier. By no means am I the first person using this language. Um, there is a book, I don't know if any of you have read it, called Visible Work which I think might be interesting for you to look at. I haven't read it, but it, it looks like it can be interesting. It's actually about um, unsurfacing the work that is being done and whether that's useful or not. So I decided to focus on teamwork. And there's three buckets that, that I found um, are helpful to, to divide these conversations in. Because for me, these are points of connection. There are uh, points of the work we're doing as individuals that help the team to do the work better as a team. So um, the, the, let me just, I'm just gonna go into them. Um, so there's, as I said, there's the work, uh, which is making work visible. And in, I, I, I know of Agile, I'm not an Agile practitioner at all, but I do know that there is a lot of visible teamwork, especially visible workflows going on in Agile. So that, that's one aspect. The open conversations, which are the work that happens online asynchronously, that we have online in the open with our team members rather than in a private message, that is work visibility. It is conversations around the work. We've also got visible thinking, that's part of the work, which is what am I, uh, as I'm creating this piece of work, what am I thinking? What are my questions? Where are the bits I need help with? Um, what else? What else is part of work visibility? Because you might have something more specific for some of your work. What are the things that you do um, in your team that is useful to see other people doing? Let me just, I'm just going to stop sharing. 
What are some of the things that are part of your work that you think, well, I, I either I, I like seeing that or I miss seeing that? It could be the workflow. It could be something more specific. I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. <laughs> that's a great. Uh, that's a great uh, uh, comment. So um, when we're thinking about working with our team members, there's different aspects of the work. Um, as, as I see it, of teamwork. There is, for example, progress of tasks. Let me be more specific. So progress of tasks, for me, that's very important to see um, because it affects how I engage with my tasks if I know that someone is doing something that I need to do. So progress of tasks is the, one of the most obvious ones. For me, it also helps to, to see um, what connections people are making, for example, through the work. So if I'm working with someone who is work, talking to other clients, I like to see what those conversations might be. So that's kind of the work. I think of it as in, if we think that we are in a space together in a traditional office, we overhear bits of conversation about the work. So that could be one. Uh, I, the work itself, actually, if we're in a knowledge work, uh, I also like to see like someone's working on a drawing or a diagram. What other aspects of maybe your work um, is interesting. So I'll, I'll go to Kate, who's in the chat, the visual work uh, film. Okay. And it, so it helps you to connect the, the visual uh, work. What do you mean by the visual work, Kate? Um, what was your first one of the three items that you showed? Basically visualizing everything because now you can read it. You don't have to overhear it. And I feel in a remote setting, I can overhear all the conversations and ah. filter out what I want to and in a physical space, I can only every year maybe one or two conversations. So yeah. I feel more connected to more people. Yeah, the open conversations maybe is, is one of the things. Yes, that is a really interesting point uh, and something that, um, yeah, that's a very interesting point. Anything else? Any other specifics maybe in the work that we think, you know, when my, I, I like seeing that my team works are doing that or I like hearing my team works talk about that. Mm, it's maybe a bit of a deviation, but one of the things I really like to do is when we are doing review of the product. So, you know, we focus so much into the what, what, what we're building, but every now and then we stop. Um, and so I try to encourage for those conversations to be open for the whole organization because we're building something with a common goal. So I, I really love when that happens because mm -hmm. you can show something um, and then you get lots of different inputs, ideas, feedback and stuff like that. So I think... Uh, it helps also to generate connections to you know put sort of context into names and things like that so that's another yeah. way to see your work yeah thank you and par part of work visibility in a team especially if you are within an organization is making your work visible to other parts of the organization and thinking of again very deliberate ways of doing this because if not what the, the, I mean there's lots of different reasons one is um, well your work can not be visible and your team can be forgotten about which <laughs> might be important for all kinds of things uh, there's also the networking effect like if 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 you're, if you're working within an organization, if nobody knows what you're doing or what you're working on right now, nobody knows to come and ask you for help as well, or nobody knows to ask your input into a project or whatever. So I think that identifying that, I think this is going to be something that's going to be very big in organizations is that everyone's been concentrating, well, I'm making a huge generalization, but everyone's been concentrating in how teams work and make, getting that working, but actually within the organization, we need an ecosystem and that's got to be curated. So um, from things like uh, enterprise social networks where people very deliberately form groups around interests, which are not team specific, that are something that everyone can have an opinion with, right to um, something that I heard an organization doing is right to, if you're using email in the organization, changing the email signature to whatever, Ines Garcia, and instead of just head of whatever department, Ines Garcia, ask me anything about, I don't know, uh, 
uh, I don't know, making teacups <laughs> or, or this week my team is focusing on. And it's again, it's finding these little bits of how do we make. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I think it's, you see, I think these things, it doesn't have to be big. That's the main thing. Or even, um, or using the calendars for that as well, rather than meeting, busy, whatever, then write what, what it is you're working on so that if that's available to others, they can see it. So a lot of this stuff, um, what I see is we try sometimes to adopt big stuff, but actually we've got already lots of things that we can just, we can just tweak. Good. Uh, anything else around that? I do. Anyone wants to say yes. Within my team, it's quite a big program level team, but I tried to get as much stuff visible through our wiki site. And my everybody knows my signature, any notes that go out, uh, my out of office always has several links to kind of the key information. So yeah. that I have had people say, oh, that saved me so many times, you know. At least I knew where to go to get the information yeah. if you weren't here. So Yes. Yeah. Ah, that's very important as well. Of course, that's part of visible teamwork is note what to do when you're not here <laughs> as well. Yeah. And I think we can then um, at some point when we are embracing this and when we when we start to think about how it might work, then we can start to experiment with the technology a bit more as well. So something that is coming up a lot now in asynchronous communication is audio and video. Uh, in an, which, which requires a different way of thinking about asynchronous communication as well, as I'm discovering. But again, when we're looking at making our team visible, we can start thinking about that as well. What is it that, you know, would, would the organization benefit from us showing up uh, on audio in the intranet every now and then? Or I don't know, you, you see where I'm going. Um, yeah, okay, Ines, yes, yes, use what, use what we've got at hand. Great. Let's. Um, I'll just take you through this quite quickly. Um, so we've got the work, so we can see that there's, and an, it, and it's really about really understanding what the work we're doing and the processes in our work, as in, you know, there's workflow, there's thinking about it, there's connecting with others, there's the learning piece, and then seeing, okay, of those, what are we missing? What are we missing either, I always see this as either for alignment, so to help us do the work better, or for connection because we might be in a team where actually our work is ve not very much affected by what another team member is doing, but actually we use the work to connect. So what do I want to know about what my colleagues are doing so I can feel connected to them and how can we make that visible in an easy way, as Ines was saying. Then we've got the bit about the person, which is um, what do we need to know about people and how they show up at work? Because of course, that's uh, <laughs> there's we start to be away from each other. We don't see each other as much. We maybe have less conversations. This is all a maybe. So what are the little things that we can communicate about um, when we are uh, talking about the person, about how we show up at work? So what do we need to know about one another and the environment, for example? Um, some of the small drawings that are here, it's availability. And availability is not just about uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a meeting or not, but actually what am I doing? And this can I be tapped in the shoulder or is this not a great time? And making that explicit. Um, we can say what's going on if we're working from home, in the home, the mood we're in. I mean, it really depends on the, 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 the level of, uh, the level of engagement you have in your team, the level of connection you want. So Kate, can I ask you, do you have anything like this in your team? Anything where you share how you're feeling, what's going on. I don't know, you said you were pretty much aligned. Is there a space or something you do asynchronously around this? We've got check-ins every single day. Then everybody has to post what did they do today. And sometimes you would just add, I had a headache or I had errands to run. So there's always a sense of being personal as well. And then we use Basecamp and there's a really nice overlay on your profile to show that you're out. So mm -hmm. you um, are always, you never, either you are at work or you're out. So that simplifies it a lot that you don't have to worry about figuring out what the status should be. And if you are at work, you just never expect an immediate answer. So that simplifies things. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. I've got the, um, so the work visibility, got it the wrong way around. 
we just talked about that. Thank you. So that's so that's that other piece. Um, anything anyone wants to say about the deliberate communication or the personal thing? We'll move on. Okay, great. And then finally, there's this bit of uh, uh, team spirit and the concept of planned spontaneity, which is, again, <laughs> unless you plan for it, you're never going to have these spontaneous conversations. And of course, we've discovered the real time way of doing it with the, the virtual coffees, where we just turn up to talk about whatever we want to talk about it doesn't have to be work related and all of those have different levels of spontaneity from the ones where uh, we just turn up to the ones where we have a theme uh, of course the voluntary coffee so that the spontaneity is in who is there so we have different kinds of conversations but again i would like to pick up on ines point as well that the more we can exploit what we've already got to make these things more personal the more spontaneous we can be so, for example, um, avatars in platforms, they can be changed every week if we want to, depending on, again, on the organization. Um, I love working in Google Docs because you can see when somebody else is in there. But again, you've got to know that that feature is there. So, again, choosing and um, highlighting those elements in our technology already where we think actually this here has this bit where we see what someone else is typing are we doing anything with that do we want to do something with that do we want to uh, when we see that someone else is typing at the same time as us uh, do we want to say hello to them you know how do we deal how do we deal with these moments that we can find online of connection um, and then again going back to that moment of asynchronous communication as this kind of communication that is not real time, but doesn't always have to be text. Because if I want to explain that I, going back to an earlier point, if I'm proud of something I've just finished or something I've done or some feedback I've got, what better thing than to grab an audio and record a very quick minute and a half to tell my team how proud I was of that. We can do it in writing, that's, that's also good. And it might be that actually we prefer to do it in writing. But again, it's like, okay, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this concept of working out loud or visible teamwork? And what might be the, the easiest uh, way of doing this? Um, does anyone use asynchronous audio or asynchronous video in the organization? Do you know what I'm, do, do you want me to explain what I mean by asynchronous audio or asynchronous video? <clears throat> Yes, please. If you could explain, that would be yeah. great. For me. Yeah, thank yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. Uh, so um, when we're talking about asynchronous communication, we're looking at um, at communication that doesn't need an immediate reply. So I send out my message and when you're ready, hopefully uh, you reply. We often have we, we need agreements around the reply time. I think that's really, really important that we've agreed in the team what is an, an, an expected reply. So that is usually being done by text. Email was the best uh, example when it used to be asynchronous. It's become a little bit of a almost synchronous uh, thing. And then what we start is to be able to send audio messages. So if we think of an old fashioned telephone message where I, I, uh, I called you and I got your answering machine. I leave a message of audio, then you try and call me. And I don't pick up and you leave another message. So that would be asynchronous audio. And asynchronous video would be very much the same. Instead of this kind of real time interaction on video, I record a video uh, message uh, or or something, um, yeah, a message, and then I leave it for you and then you reply eventually. It's re this space is really, really interesting from a couple of uh, points of view. There's a lot of technology that's coming up around this. Uh, an app that I've recently been in touch with is called Volley App. And, 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 um, and Volley App has actually been designed for me to leave a message. You can thread your reply in video, text or audio into it. Uh, and it's really been designed for, for that. It's another app that I can't remember the name where if you look at, it's like a white, um, well, just like a, a screen, a normal page. And then you see the video, the video, the next one underneath, the next one underneath, the next one underneath. The technology is, so that will evolve. What I think is really interesting to think about is when does using audio become more complicated than using text, for example? So what I've noticed is that if I'm trying to have a conversation purely about the work, I prefer it to be in text because I can go down it, I can come back to it. It's really easy to refer to. Whereas if I want to have a, some banter, 
around, I don't know, either an emotional um, reaction to the work or something that is work related, but not task related, then actually audio and video is quite nice because I get to hear, I get to see, et cetera. But I think that um, a audio and video asynchronous communication are going to bring some problems with it. So I think it's really interesting to see, okay, where do these fit in? Because I can see just everyone at, as soon as there's like a really simple app that everyone can adopt, we're going to go for that. And that's going to create lots of issues. So again, thinking about that. So um, is it um, so if we're thinking about asynchronous, what are the best ways and what frameworks do we need for each conversation? What parameters do we need around it? Uh, and yes, um, Mungwei, that is the app I was referring to. Uh, and then Loom is, uh, again, a video recording. I leave a video for you, then you can reply to me um, as well. And it's been around for ages. Excellent. So, um, so is it almost like using social media, you know, like Snapchat, where it's a picture and some words or something and, and off it, that goes? I mean, so, you know, in our organization, there's, a lot of vlogging and things like that but they're they tend to be senior leaders or you know messages that they want recorded to go out to everyone and that you can watch in your own time but they are generally you know approved mm. and all that sort of thing um but you know and i think of an example there was you know some great live proving and and a lot of complex changes that went in the other day and it was successful so in my meeting today, I made sure that we celebrated it and had people, you know, discussing it and thank people. But that's something where you could do a congratulations with a bit of fireworks or something and then send that off to a group, right, in yeah. email and they could. But it, but it would need to be something that's easy, as quick as phone the way record video and say or something. Exactly, exactly. The, the ease of use, again, back to that point, what we don't want to be is to create, have barriers that don't allow us to be spontaneous with it, actually, mm. and going back to spontaneity as well. So um, exactly that. And you also bring a point, this point of uh, the reference to social media and how asynchronous communication is being used in organizations is, yeah, there's, there's all these different elements. I mean, I'm working on a course on asynchronous communication and I started, oh, let's have a course about asynchronous communication. And it's just growing because you have the one-to-many, which is more the announcements, the things we're used to, these blogs. Yeah. Um, and but then you have the many-to-many -many as well. Then you have uh, the team specific that, that usually takes a different kind of, well, like all communication, maybe less formal, but then you have the many-to-many organizational-wise, et cetera. So um, we also start to look at, and, and what I think is needed as well is uh, to change the mindset around some of that, that actually not only senior leaders should be expected to have a blog, but actually it should be very easy for anyone in an organization to set up a blog if they want to make their thinking visible, because otherwise, how does knowledge spread and how do we capture it as well? Um, and then, then when we bring more tools in like these, which um, help us to they're really helping us to bring more of ourselves and to have more choice in how we communicate. Because I can be a brilliant writer and I'm like, I am like that actually. I do. I'm not a brilliant writer, but I love writing. So, I, but actually other people are like, I really, I do not want to write another word. And the last thing I want to do is communicate with you in writing. So let's give us the, the, the audio thing. And, and like you say, I think what you're saying is an excellent example of where a tool like this could bring a lot of value into a team because it can suddenly give you spontaneity. It can mean that I'm making lots of assumptions. You know, it could be a team that works really hard and therefore they rarely hear themselves uh, literally. Mm -hmm. So just bringing that in could be great. Or actually it could be a team where everyone has very, very, very different schedules and they never have those moments of <gasps> that we're talking about. And actually this might help you because you can hear someone have that moment of <gasps> And that can help as well, that connection and could feel you to have that moment of, so um, excellent. Great. Oh, more tools. I love it. Oh, oh, I'll have to make <laughs> nooks.in. Okay. That's one for the list. <laughs> so, um, so again, so we can see, so, I mean, we can see that what we want to know from each other well, everyone has different things that they want to know from each other. Everyone enjoys different kind of conversations. So, 
as a minimum check-in, again, if we're going for simplicity, um, this is finally the framework that I wanted to, to share with you. And it's not like a super wah, huge thing, but I think it encapsulates a lot of what we've been talking about. Um, and this is the kind of thing that, for example, we can have an, um, an asynchronous check-in or it can be a check-in in a meeting. And it's that moment of, it's a little bit like the animals. It's that moment of, how is everyone doing? <laughs> Let's check in with each other. You're like, oh, my brain is full of things. I don't know. What, 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 what do I say? And it's really nice to just have something that guides you through some of the things that, um, that could be interesting. This is not my framework. This comes from Jochen Lilicht, who has a company called Freist.it. And he wrote a blog post called Working out loud does not mean being nosy, uh, noisy. <laughs> it means noisy. Working out loud does not mean being noisy. And this is what they use in their team. And they use it in Slack. And I think it's a check in either daily or weekly. And they this, this is what they say they share a decision they've made, they share an insight, so something they've learned, for example, a result, again, an emotion, a contact they've made. A trouble they've had, going back to someone said, when you need help, you, you want to be able to, to work out loud. And thanks, which is, goes to Mary Ellen's point in a way of that uh, uh, thing, being grateful to someone else as well. And I think this is really, um, it encaptures almost anything that we might want to hear from or share. Is there anything you think that's missing? Because to be honest, the framework was direct with only one T. And I added the thanks because I thought it's just this that we can put that in. And you know what? Um, I was talking to um, a, a colleague of mine. She brought me in to do to do a workshop for her organization during the pandemic. And she said they used to have that uh, around like a weekly check in at the end of every week with her team in a meeting. And she said because of the context, just those meetings, the the tone was really down just because of what everyone was going to, through. They introduced this. And as soon as they introduced that thanks bit, the tone lifted. It really is just, and I find this, I find that we, it's just one of those things we forget. But is there anything that we could add, do you think? Maybe not. <laughs> ah, yes. Nice, Kate. Okay. Great. I can't think of anything to add myself, but I just really love this frame. It's kind of a really good kind of, uh, uh, yeah, meeting structure, right? Just anyway, I mean, just in general, uh, you could use this because um, yeah. it works for every feels like it works for most meetings that I would run <laughs> yeah yeah I was using it with um with a, a team I was working with doing do, doing a long uh stint with them and I introduced this they are they're a small team there's only 10 of them but they're in two locations there was one in France and one in in Spain and they're a small team because uh, and also they're basically departments of one so they're all doing very, very, very different stuff. And so bringing this in just meant that the amount of information you get in whatever, it was 10 minutes maybe, the amount of information about what was going on within 10 minutes at all kinds of different levels is really big. And, and you touch that. And I think that um, as always, it's that thing of if you don't ask something specific, someone might never tell you. So for example, I might be struggling and don't know how to, express that or how to ask for help but as soon as you know i've been given this uh, framework and i go well well i have nothing to say but I'll, I'll go with e for emotion actually you know you can you can it, it can really bring out stuff that otherwise might just not come to the table um so again we can use it in a meeting i think it's a great way to start uh, a meeting to check in but actually it's also a really nice way of checking in every week for example, even once a week would be great to just see what everyone is thinking uh, around this. Good. Okay. Great. 
Um, and the, the how, well, <laughs> take your peek of, of how you can uh, how you can do this. Oh, I've lost my mouse. Here it is. So we can um, again we can have meetings. We can have a, a, a channel in Slack or Microsoft Teams. We can do. I think this is something great for an asynchronous video. We were talking or an asynchronous audio. Just uh, really a. a, a a 30 second stint and even in a large team it can be it can be quite nice uh, or even uh, email so if we would use email we just we can have an email thread around that or things like i think it's quite nice as well if you if you have a team that's going through for example if you're doing a pilot or if it's a team that's experimenting or if it's a new team this could be really nice to capture as documentation of what the team is going through so something a bit more meaty, like a, a notebook, uh, an online notebook, I don't know, whatever you use, uh, OneNote or even a Google Doc, but just something. And then at some point, one, it can form part of a retrospective, maybe, because it, it's not just about the work. Uh, it can, it's a great onboarding tool, I think. It can really give you a sense when you go back of how the team works, what's been going on, the kind of things that are important to team members. Um, and actually... Again, um, my my um, my main interest is uh, lead management and leadership. Again, it's a really good tool for a manager just to get a sense of what's going on. Not to use it as a management tool, but as an awareness tool. Just something that that, that we can use. So it's got loads of uses. Um, and again, how we do it, we can probably figure that out. Um, okay, I think. We're not going to do the one to four all unless, what do you think? Do you want, okay, let me, I'm going to stop. So we're going to do a chat storm. <laughs> we're going to do a chat storm. So everyone uh, uh, needs to take part in this. Um, do, do Would you like to go into a breakout room just to have a smaller conversation? I've got three questions that I'll give you. So it won't just be, just talk about anything. I'll give you three specific questions. Um is it something you, you fancy doing? Do you want to go into smaller groups? Are you fine to stay like this? So um, either put group or breakout in the chat. And after three, I'll say go and we can, we can see what we want to do. Um, I think I'm trying to think if we want to. Yeah, yeah. So let, let's see what people think and then I'll make the decision. So I'll, I'll, I'll canvas you, but then I'll make the decision just so someone has to. So if you write it in the chat and after go, we all press enter. One, two, three, go. Group, 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 group. Excellent. We've got a great consensus. It's always easy and, and it doesn't matter. Fantastic as well. Also, excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, let's let's stay in, in the group. Um, so let me just, uh, okay, I'm going to, give you have you got any questions or anything you want to say if not i've got some examples of other stuff that people do which i think is always interesting um any questions reflections anything you anything you want to ask the group before i move on and start wrapping up anything that you're curious to oh, do people do this how do you do that I have, I have a question oh, um, on the asynchronous, I think it's maybe Kate or, you, or yourself, Pilar, um, asynchronous communication. Because what I find I come across quite a lot within Teams, and I'm definitely um, a, I definitely do this as well, is that when you sort of ask somebody something on Slack, um, you kind of expect an, ex an answer relatively quickly, like within kind of half an hour, I would usually expect an answer, something like that, um, which may not be reasonable or fair because uh, people have the stuff they're working on. If you were to introduce that to a team that had been working like that, what what sort of approach would you take? When you say a team that would that had been working like that, what do you mean? So um, being very immediate with their okay. responses, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, if you don't if you don't have a re response straight away, you then get an email, and then you know it sort of escalates that sort of environment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kate has opened her mic, so I'm going to defer to her. But I've got some opinion on on that. Kate, um, previously we were in a team where it was more like that, where everybody was pretty much monitoring the chat and all their energy and attention was going into that. And that I thought was very unproductive. So I spoke to the manager and 
we agreed that maybe it's not such a sensible thing. So the team got together and we spoke about it and we agreed on a timeline. So they need to, um, if it is something urgent, then you tag them. So you just pretty much outline some base rules of how, what, what's the expectations in terms of communication? When do you need to ex um, respond immediately? And when can you take your time? Mm -hmm. And that worked pretty well. Thanks. Thank you, Kate. I think the team agreement is crucial. Uh, and uh, bye, Alpesh. See you later. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's, the team agreement is crucial because we need to understand what urgent means and what the, um, what's expected, um, what, what the timeline between one message and the other is expected. I think um, something for me like Slack, I mean, for me, Slack is, is always um, asynchronous. So you shouldn't... Uh, you should know when something is urgent. It shouldn't be part of the general conversation. So either private messages or either put an icon next to the urgent or again, tag or, or default to email when it's urgent. I don't know. Or, or the other way around, email when it's not urgent, Slack when it's urgent, it doesn't matter. But I think those parameters are really, really important. The other thing is to understand why a message is urgent. Um, and also, depending on where you are in the world, why it's not a phone call as well. Because why is a message urgent? Is it because I don't have enough information and therefore I'm having to look for it all the time? So actually then the problem is not reply of messages. The problem is a visible workflow problem or a visible work problem. So why is something urgent? And you could also, if you have something like... Um, like a Slack, you could also segment it in a way that you say, right, these are the rules for, because we have to use Slack for whatever reason. Yeah, we can't use the phone. Um, there might be one channel, which is an urgent channel. I don't know. And then, and then that urgent conversation, if it needs to be visible somewhere else, then we can take it somewhere else when we've got more time. I don't know. There's all kinds of things. But I think that a team agreement, you need to have the conversation about reply times. Definitely, definitely. And it needs to be in a live document that you can change. And it needs to be somewhere that a person new into the team with different expectations can go and look and go, you know, first week I'm there and I'm like, oh, what did they say was the thing for urgent team agreement? There we go. That's where that's where I see it. Um, I think that's really, really important. And the other thing is to recognize a different. We have a whole episode, I think, like a week or two, um, uh, some very recent around team rhythm. And the fact that uh, different teams have different rhythms of communication. So some teams, they, they have decided, agreed, the work needs them not to have to reply to anything unless it's urgent, like really urgent, within two days. And that gives a rhythm to the team. Other teams, they have agreed that actually, unless we communicate that we're not available, we're available all the time. And then that rhythm will change as the project evolves. So a typical thing would be at the beginning of the project, we have a quick rhythm because we're trying to figure out things, what we do, blah, blah, we're not clear. Blah, blah. Then we probably have a lull where everything slows down a bit. And then we go at the end, maybe that needs again. So maybe that is something that people new to remote especially maybe need to do, which is that is part of our how we work and is something we need to revisit. It's what's the rhythm of communication as well. The other thing is that... Um, the team agreement, depending on the size of the team, you can go two ways. You can go, let's agree, or you can go, well, the six of us, let's all six of us state our preferences. And one person might say, well, if it's urgent, phone me. And someone will say, if it's urgent, blah. You know, it depends on the team as well. So there's, there's but, but we need that deliberate communication piece for this, definitely. And it can, be, it can become a source of friction as well. So it's really important to, to tackle it as before it happens. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ah, oh, thank you, Helen. What a great question. I love it. Uh, and Kate says, when somebody's unusually quiet, check in personally with a DM. Yeah, because that, that's another thing is that um, different people, just some people are very happy to get on with the work and not chat throughout the day. And they might be listening like you would, you know, like someone in an office just gets on with their stuff. Again, where is the structure for that person to contribute in a way that is going to be helpful to them and their team? So not just because they, we want them to contribute, just because we want them to be that, see that they're happy, which is a different story, but how are we going to facilitate for that person to contribute? So it could be by having something where actually we've agreed that every week we check in with this thing and that's it. And maybe that's all we hear from them unless something is not going on. So that's another very um, 
very important dimension as well. How do we stop people from drifting away? Great. Good. Excellent. Right. I think we've come to anything else you want to ask or me to cover. We've got two minutes, if not. Do, do you usually do like a quick checkout, especially with a, 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 a group this size? We can probably do like a, I don't know. Didn't you have an activity or something where you were going to put three questions out? Uh, it, it, this was for the for the breakout uh, uh, group. But um, you know what? I'm going to show you really quickly. I will just share. I will share this um, and I'll upload this file uh, now. So other things that we can be doing to connect again uh, to uh, well, those uh, connection conversations in acceleration partners, they post three things they'd like to achieve during the day. And this is nice, again, because it's three things and it can help some people to plan as well or to realize what it is they want to do. Um, or conversely, at the end of the week, I like this from Doist. What interesting thing you've learned over the last week. Bit of pressure, the interesting. Uh, but I think it's nice that it makes people pause. And the great thing about like uh, asynchronous communication is that hopefully what we're trying to achieve is a slower pace of work, but you know, it's not always possible. And um, uh, Chris uh, Colladonato, is a, uh, she's a practitioner, she actually schedules in her calendar reminders to check in with people in her team or the organization. I think this is really important because if not, we forget. We don't see them. We don't remember they're there. <laughs> and then um, Automatic has a wonderful um, feedback structure. I don't know if they still use it where they have a very structured feedback, which is led by the team member. But you can also use this for a check-in, actually. If you have like a, um, you have a meeting, which is more about how the team is working, you can have this, you can check in, okay, well, what are the things you're doing well? And this can be answered individually, which is really nice. So, so those are um, the things. So I've got some questions. I'll, I'll give you this, um, just some questions about if we're, thinking of incorporating principles and aspects of visible teamwork, we have to start with the questions. Why are we doing it? What do we need to know from each other? Tak -tak. And that is my end slide, uh, virtualnodistant.com for all your, there's lots of articles there. 21st century work, like I am hitting episode 300 next week. And it's going to be a celebratory episode that consists of three parts because I asked 12 people to contribute. It's got too much material. But it's going to be a really, really nice piece about looking at what people think is going to change in the next three years, how remote workers have changed their own practice over the last uh, three years as well. Um, my pocket psych for psychology of the workplace Facilitation stories for um, stuff about facilitation, if you are into facilitation. So thank you. Anything that you want to say to the group? Well, we are still together. Thank you to Helen and Ines, as always, for hosting. As always. It's really nice hosting. I love it. I love it. I had a really good time. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> and thank you, everyone. It's really, really nice. Uh, great. Yeah, that's, oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. I wanted much. to take the opportunity to use the direct feedback as a closing note, if that's okay. So yes. One, the decision that I take is that I need to check some of the tools and settings. Two, the insight that I came with is that you guys make this work. Um, the resource is I'm already using the thing. <laughs> one of the tools so, great um emotions mixed throughout the session this time that we had together um skipping contacts and troubles you probably can guess that one <laughs> and thank you thank you for you lot to lift us and and to give me such a lovely way to run my evening so oh that's excellent thank you i love seeing things being used <laughs> straight away that's great Ines. Good. All right, else? So, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll let you finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let you finish. No, please. Yeah. Uh, no, no, last, no, no. last thoughts and Pilar, how do, um, um, well, just give me the link and we'll post it and all that together. But yeah, thank, thank you so much once again. And we'll see you next month. Thank you very much.
Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.